Hello, my name's Brian Welsh from Australia, Canberra, and I've been doing mission work on the streets for 30 years. We're here today to share the greatest love story in the history of humanity. That God so loves the world that he gave his own son. Have you ever thought about, about giving your own child into a sacrifice that will save the world? Wow, a series of 12 talks, how to present the gospel on the streets throughout the world. I invite you through Shalom TV to come and listen to these series. In the Genesis, the Bible says that God created male and female. Isn't that beautiful? He, do, he identifies them as male and female. And what we do with your masculinity, what you do with your femininity, there are consequences. So to come to the truth that is in God's Word, to come to the truth that is in Jesus Christ, the greatest feminine beauty that ever walked the face of the earth was the ever virgin. Did you hear that? Ever Virgin Mary, remain a virgin, girls. It's a blessing. An ever virgin, it's a beautiful blessing from God. The greatest man that walked outside of Jesus was Saint Joseph. He remained a virgin. Do you hear that word virginity? It's like a dirty word in our society today, but it's a blessing of God Most High. If you claim, identify with that, your whole personhood would be in order. And so how do we talk? to those heterosexual people who are in relationships of say, oh, I've got a partner. How do you talk to a person who identifies as a gay or a lesbian or transgender? How do we, say, how do we approach those beautiful people? And they are human beings, they're not human doings. They were, we, we are beautiful in the eyes of God, made in His image and His likeness. One of the things we say is that if you're heterosexual, if you're a gay, if you're a lesbian, or if you're homosexual, is to say you are, we do not say that you're going to be condemned. Why? Although the Bible talks about the whole thing of homosexuality, etc., and those fornicators and adulterers, but if you're a, a heterosexual, or homosexual, or gay, God loves you and He's calling you to holiness. He's calling you to live a chaste life. Chastity is one of the beautiful gifts that God offers. Chastity, it means to have your whole mind, your emotions, your sexuality under the Lordship of Jesus Christ and being ordered, not with impurity, not with perversity. And that's why I like to start this one with those who, who say, oh yes, I've got a partner. The Bible says, never says anything about partnerships. I had a partner in business. It's all about business. Relationship isn't about a business, it's about your identity, your meaning, your purpose, who you are in Christ and in that relationship. Because our first relationship that Jesus calls us into is to be with Himself. He says, come, follow me. Be my disciple. Follow me. Unless you take up the cross, you cannot be my disciple. And so there is a cost to pray. Jesus paid the cost on the cross of Calvary. He paid for the price of every immoral sin, every person's sin, including mine. He paid the price on the cross of Calvary and by His wounds, His sacred wounds, you are healed. How? Because He's risen from the dead. He took upon Himself your lie, my lie, your sin and sinfulness, my sin and sinfulness, and He nailed it to the cross. He nailed it to the cross and the very first thing that He cried out to every human being, whether you're heterosexual living in a, a fornicating, adulterous relationship or in a homosexual relationship, a lesbian relationship, transgender relationship, He says, Father, forgive them. Forgive them. He never closes the door. We close the door because we run our guilt our shame turns us away from God. And that's why the Bible says, although the light has come into the world, it's not that Son, S-U-N, it's the Son, S-O-N, the Son of God. Although the light has come into the world for love of you, 
people chose darkness. What have you chosen? Have you chosen light? Have you chosen darkness in the area of your sexuality? Because that is made in the image and likeness of God. Femininity, masculinity. So one thing that I do not say to people when we're ministering in this great mission and evangelization of the whole world, who's going to hell and who's not going to hell. But I do say that you're called into a relationship. You're called into a relationship with the most closest and intimate person that ever walked the face of the earth. I shared that story the other, other time, but I want to share it again, that we're on the streets in, in, in Canberra just last year or earlier this year, and I came across a beautiful young Jewish lesbian woman. And I said to her that the Torah speaks against this type of act. It's a sin. And the Holy Spirit so convicted her heart that she started to panic. And I said, stop panicking. I said, there's a way out. There's a way out. And it's through the blood of Jesus. And she blamed her, her other partner, who was only 18, she was 17, her other sexual partner. She said, you wanted it. You wanted the experience. Did you hear that? Young people are looking for an experience, an experience that gives away the beauty and dignity within inside themselves. And they know they do wrong. And we prayed with that young woman that night, as I've said before. There was other young people, I remember when we were in Canberra a few years ago, we were voting same-sex marriage and so forth. And there's two beautiful young girls dancing on the rainbow. And they came running up to myself and they said, we see you out here often. What's, what's your name? I said, Brian. He said, we need to talk to you. I said, okay, let's go up to McDonald's. And so I went up to McDonald's, we sat down, I brought them a Macca's. And I said, what's the problem? And one of them started to cry. And she said, we lost our virginity. You see, the world says, throw your virginity away. And she cried and she cried. And the other one started to cry. And in my heart, I'm going, hallelujah, because they opened up. And I said, oh, I know a man that can restore the very virginity of your heart. That which was, was stolen, Jesus can restore it back to you again. Because Jesus is Lord. He's risen from the dead. He's alive. He's alive. You never heard me. He's alive. And that night I prayed over them in the Maccas and they cried and cried and cried. Two months later, I saw them again on the streets. And they came up and said, hi, do you remember me? I said, remind me. She said, we're the born again virgins. <laughs> God gave them an gave them experience of virginity in their hearts. He restored it in their hearts. And they brought to me 15 young women that night who wanted to reclaim the gift and beauty of their virginity again. And I prayed over every one of them, each one. And some cried. They cried as they opened their heart to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And my sisters and brothers, these are two beautiful stories that I share with you. That Jesus is about renewing, He's about rebuilding, the re wants to rebuild the foundations. The foundation is your, in your life. Is it Jesus? Is the foundation in your sexuality, your moral life? Is it Jesus Christ and His moral teaching? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I really want to encourage you to open your hearts wide in vulnerability to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You know when you lost something precious, guilt and shame. Guilt and shame. We can laugh. We can put on a big mask. We can put on makeup. And as I said, we can tattoo our bodies. We can dye our hair. But in the heart, there's a guilt. There's a shame. And when we say to the people that God loves you and we speak of the beauty of chastity, and I speak to a lot of homosexual guys, I say, did you know that you were born to be loved, to be in relationship with Jesus? And I say to them, what is it you're looking for? I remember a young man just last year. I said, what is it? He was in a homosexual relationship. He was dressed up. I said, what is it you are looking for? I said, is it meaning? Is it purpose? Is it identity? Yes. Every man and every woman is looking for the love that's in the heart of Jesus Christ. We can turn our heads away, but Jesus sees the heart. He knows the guilt and the shame that you suffer. He knows the lostness in your heart. That's why He's given us a conscience. Well, I prayed with that young man. He turned around and He said to me, 
You know, Brian, no one has ever spoken to me like this. I've met other Christians and they condemn me. He said, there's no condemnation in those who are in Christ Jesus and those who are coming to Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit is already at work in people's hearts today. He feels the longing, the loneliness. So the words of wisdom, woe, the words of wisdom is turned to Jesus. Open up your sexuality to the person of Jesus Christ. Yes, open up your heart, your mind, your body. Just this year, Jesus is Lord. If Jesus isn't Lord in your mind, in your heart, in your body, in your identity, in your sexuality, He's not Lord in your life at all. And when we surrender the gift and the beauty of our masculinity and our femininity, He anoints it with truth. When Jesus stood before Pontius Pilate, Jesus says, if anybody is on the side of truth, you'll listen to my voice. What voice are you listening to, brothers and sisters? Are you listening to the voice of atheism, modernism? Are you listening to the voice of lies coming through the secular media, the mentality of atheism, materialism, the gender ideology? What voice are you listening to? Because anybody who listens to the voice of Jesus Christ and accepts that voice, they'll be a transformed person. And that's why you and I are called to become disciples. A disciple, if you're not speaking for Jesus, you're not yet His disciple. Because we live the message and we speak the message. And we need to be set free from fear. The fear of man, the fear of going to court, the fear of going to jail, the fear of being persecuted. As I've said before, Jesus said, come follow me in the world, you're going to have trouble. <laughs> you're going to have trouble. I've got a first class ticket. I've won many first class clear tickets in the troublemaking arena because the truth brings trouble. Men of Australia, who do you identify yourself with? Do you identify yourself with the Lordship of Jesus Christ? Or will you say, you say I'm, I'm a, only a heterosexual, I'm a homosexual, I'm gay, and yet you reject salvation. Don't live the lie. Come to the person of Jesus Christ. Many people to say, but it's my body, it's my right. That the Bible is clear. The Bible is clear. If you're baptised, if you're being confirmed, and if you call yourself a Christian, you are no longer your own because you've been brought, not with silver and gold. You haven't been brought by the government of Australia. You haven't been brought by the media. You haven't been brought by the gender ideology. You've been brought by the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed upon the cross of Calvary. You've been brought and paid for. You're no longer your own. You're no longer slaves to sin. You're no longer slaves to impurity and perversity. You're a, you're a loving slave to Jesus Christ. What does that mean? He sets you free. You want to be set free. What's your heart like? Then repent, renounce sin. Because sin binds us up. Sin binds us up. Do you want to be set free, gentlemen? Because there's only one way. If you, if, you want to go, if you want to go that way in bondage, think wisely, my friend. A fool says in his heart, there's no God. Did you hear that? The fool says in his heart, there's no God. But to come to Jesus, He brings healing into our lives. And to know in your heart of hearts, that you've been ransomed. If you've been kidnapped, and many of us here today have been kidnapped. We've been kidnapped by lies of the media. We've been kidnapped by secularism and materialism. And you've been paid, there has been a ransom that's been paid from the lies. And it's the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. You don't have to listen to the lies. Come to Jesus. He is the way and the truth. And as He says, anybody's on the side of truth, on the side of truth, will listen to my voice. And the truth, when you come to know it, will set you free. The truth of your femininity, the truth of your masculinity. It wasn't, it wasn't for sexual sin. Paul says, avoid, run away from sexual sin. Every other sin is committed outside the body. But sexual sin, you sin against your own body. You know you've been there. You know you've done that. It's time to repent and come back to the loving heart of Jesus. God calls us to holiness of life. And when you're speaking to, to the gender type of people, you say, God's calling you to holiness. 
A holiness that's meant to be outstanding. A holiness that meant to be changing your life, sir. Like your haircut, mate, same as mine. <laughs> holiness. Holiness unto the temple of God. You are the temple of God. Without holiness, you won't see God. Without holiness, you will not enter the kingdom of God. Everything immoral, impurity would not enter the kingdom of God. That's a hard core. That's a hard core. That's a hard line. If you're not living holiness, chastity, purity, modesty, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. You know when you do wrong in your heart, you feel it deeply inside yourself. You've lost something. Something has been stolen. Whether it's in homosexuality or, 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 or heterosexual fornication or adultery, you know in your heart of hearts, you know something is missing. You feel it deeply inside. Listen to the conscience. Listen to the God-given conscience. That's why Jesus would stand. That's why He was crucified, because people did not want to hear the truth. Do you want to hear the truth? You, when you're reaching out to gay people, they are people, transgender people. They need to know the holiness that God's calling them to. God loves you so much that He sent His only Son, that whoever believes in Him would not perish. And believing is an active thing. The devil believes in God and he's trembling in his shoes, says James. But believing is an active dynamite action. Do you believe? Will you surrender your sexuality to Jesus Christ? Will you surrender your heart? Will you give Him your eternal destiny? You are going to die. Turn to Him and be saved today. I encourage you. I encourage you. Just last Friday night, I was speaking to a beautiful young man. He was totally dressed as a woman. He looked very beautiful. Very beautiful. At 16, 17, he was totally dressed. Looked very feminine, but he was confused. So what I gave him, I said, Jesus loves you. I pulled out my rosary beads. I said, do you know the rosary? He said, yes, I do, I'm a Catholic. I said, pray the rosary that God will give you a revelation of the gift and the beauty, the gift and the beauty of your masculinity. And he promised me he would. He took the rosary card, he took the rosary beads and we prayed over him and his friend. And as I prayed for his friend, I said, look at me. And he looked at me. I said, suicide isn't the way to go. And he looked up, he says, how did you know I was going to commit suicide? You've been there, you know that. How do you know? He says, because the Holy Spirit says suicide isn't the way to go. You see, that's the thing when you're confused about your identity. You want to, you fall into darkness. Although the light has come into the world, people choose darkness. A darkness that destroys the human heart. A darkness that destroys the soul. But if you accept the light of the world, Jesus Christ, He liberates. And that young man, say his name, Sam, he went off that last Friday night and he was so happy. He was so happy that someone accepted him to tell the truth about the gift of his masculinity, about the gift of his identity, the meaning and purpose of his life. He was so touched by the love of God. My sisters and brothers, when you start speaking the truth, I want to warn you also, people will persecute you. They'll blaspheme against the holy name of Jesus. They'll call you all types of names. But you know what? Jesus promised that to us. He didn't promise us a relaxing life, but He promised us a peaceful life. When we walk in His ways, loyal to His teachings, unwavering in love and service within the body, in the community, for the sake of the salvation of the whole world. This is the good news. This is the celebration of life. And so I encourage you, think about the gift of your masculinity. If you're a gay person listening today, or whenever, whenever you're listening, if you're a lesbian, if you're transgender, if you're an other, if you're them, I want to say to you, Pray to Rosary. Ask Our Lady for the grace of revelation. She will do it. She's the most beautiful feminine woman that ever walked the face of the earth. And now is the time to invite Saint Joseph onto the battlefield of life. And life is a battle. It's a battle for life or death. 
It's a battle for eternal destiny or for damnation. And it's your choice. Wake up. Everybody's worrying about China and Russia and the wars that's going on. There's a war going on in the human heart today. It's about your identity, your meaning, your purpose, your identity. When you surrender to the lie, it takes over you. But when you surrender to the truth that is in the person of Jesus Christ, take up again the weapon against Satan and humanity. The lies is the power of the rosary. Take it up. Take it up. Take it up and use it. It's the double-edged sword. It destroys Satan. It destroys the father of lies. Don't you know the revelation says that the devil is the world's great deceiver. Have you been deceived? <laughs> Praise the Lord, brother. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's good to profess Christianity in the marketplace. Deceiving. What area in your life have you been deceived? We've all been deceived. All of us in some way. Until we come to the truth that is in Jesus Christ through His Word and the teachings of the church. That's the liberating thing. And it's hard to digest. It's hard to digest the truth. It's hard to digest the reality of your life that you've actually been led astray. You actually believed in a lie when you rejected Jesus. Or you could have believed in Jesus and at the same time, oh, it's okay, I can have a sex change. It's not okay. It's not okay, that's not God's plan. It's okay, I'm a Christian and I can do this and I can do that when it's awfully sinful. Brothers and sisters, I leave you with a question today. One question only. In your gift of your femininity and masculinity, is it under the Lordship of Jesus Christ? Or have you believed the lie? Have you believed the lie? If you believe the lie, look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself you're sorry and ask that the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father to convict your heart of the truth and to bring His healing, His mercy. And if you're going to get counselling, go to good, honest Christian counselling. Good, honest Christian counselling. Do your homework by looking at yourself and be real with yourself and open your heart wide to the one and only Saviour of the world, the man of truth and His blessed mother, Jesus and Mary and her beloved husband, Joseph. Think about it. Are you searching for fulfillment? Discover true happiness. Stay tuned to Shalom World.